What it does show is that there are fantastic vintage lenses still available at very low prices. And this is the channel to tune into if you want to find them. Hey everybody, thanks for checking in once again and welcome to another episode. And I've got something really amazing to show you today. It was uh, just a spec purchase, just a you know momentary purpose purchase. I didn't really know uh, what I was buying, whether it was any good or not. It was just something I clicked on on eBay uh, in the hope that it might yield some results. And gosh, it really has. I'll show you what it is. Where are, where are, here we are. I'll show you what it is. This is what it is. This is the Hanamex 135mm f2.8 Tele Auto. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Tele Auto. And this is a very, very nice lens indeed. It's so nice. I'm going to say it's one of the nicest 135s I've shot. I'm tempted to go a bit further and say it's the nicest 135 I've ever shot, but that's a bold claim. But it is really, really nice. It's very sharp. It's got lovely colour. It's got lovely blur. And for £15, it's one of my better buys. This lens really is quite something, and I'm very, very pleased with it. I'm going to show you the results shortly, um, but let's have a look at the lens itself first. You can see that it's all metal. Everything is metal from the nose, right back, focus ring, main body, aperture ring. I think the aperture ring is metal anyway, um, but it's a very substantial very heavy weighty lens if it's not absolutely 100 percent metal then it's 95 percent metal there's loads and loads of metal used in it and you know it's a very very solid substantial thing it's still got its past sticker on and as i've said that was an indication of very high quality in japan back in the day not always an indicator of a really nice lens, as I found out last week. However, it is an indication of quality of manufacture. This lens does the double because not only is it very nicely manufactured, it shoots really nice images as well. I've shot it on this camera, my Sony A7, and I've also shot it on this camera my Fujifilm X-T3, and on both cameras it performs beautifully. Now, this was a cheap lens back in the day, and it's still cheap today. Um, it's a third-party lens, obviously. This one has an M42 mount, so it would mount to any number of cameras back in the day, and... Lots and lots of budget photographers bought these, you know, enthusiast photographers who didn't necessarily want to spend top money on the top brand name gear. So this lens will have been used by many, many of those photographers. And I guess the choice back in the day was between a third party 135 with an aperture of f2.8 or something from the main manufacturers like this Olympus uh, 135 f3.5. So they will have been sort of comparable uh, in cost, not necessarily the same, but roughly in the same ballpark. So the choice back in the day was major manufacturers 135 3.5 or third party 135. 2.8 so the third party manufacturers usually gave that extra stop just to tempt people across from uh, the likes of olympus and canon and so on now i was really lucky with this lens because it's very very clean and it's clearly been kept by somebody in good condition 
and in the right environment. So many of these lenses are full of fungus and dust and goodness knows what, but this one is really clean. You can see by all those reflections there just how clean it is. And that's a really, really nice piece of glass, but that's all very well. Fancy reflections are all very well. How does it shoot? That's what we really want to know. It shoots beautifully, shoots absolutely beautifully. It makes fantastic images. Sharpness is extraordinary for a 135 2.8, especially one from one of the third party manufacturers. I've looked at these images in some considerable surprise, I can tell you. They are very, very sharp. They seem to me to be as sharp as uh, an Olympus 135 3.5, for example, if not a little sharper. This is one of the sharpest 135s I've shot, and it's certainly sharper than, where is it? Here it is. It's certainly sharper than other third party lenses like this one. This is the Pentacon 135 2.8. It's a lot sharper than that wide open, and it's also a lot sharper than the Helios 135 2.8 that I looked at a couple of years ago. In fact, as I say, this is one of the sharpest 135s I've shot. Just check out these images. You can see the level of detail really is quite considerable there. And just to remind you, all of this stuff was shot wide open at f2.8. Really quite an amazing performance. Everything's very clearly defined. Edges are very sharp. Because it's a long lens with a wide aperture, the plane of focus is very narrow. So what's in focus in your shot at 2.8 uh, you know, occupies a pretty narrow plane in the, you know, foreground and background, a very narrow plane of focus. But in that plane of focus, everything is absolutely pin sharp. And that I found really astonishing. That absolutely bowled me over. But as you'll see from these images, as I hope you'll see from these images, you know, they really are as sharp as I thought. Colour's really nice. It's very strong, very full, very resonant, very much full of life, very, you know, filled with energy. The colours from this lens are the equal of anything I've shot. They're absolutely gorgeous. Reds are real reds. Blues are real blues. Greens are real greens. Yellows are real yellow. You get the idea. All the colours that pass through the glass of this lens just go through some sort of lovely transformation and are represented with such energy, such such verve, such joy that I, I just think this is really extraordinary colour representation. It's very strong. Strong. It's got lots of energy. It's not weak. Sometimes, you know, depending on how you set your camera, of course, saturation varies, intensity varies. But this is not one of those lenses. I talked about these lenses last week. There are a certain class of lenses, vintage lenses, that just make colours look a bit muddy when they're wide open. I don't know what it is some formulation of the glass perhaps or some formulation of the coatings but there are certain lenses that just don't deal well with colour wide open and render them rather flat and lifeless and dull and frankly flipping awful well this is not one of those lenses I'm glad to report this is a lens that renders colours beautifully it renders them faithfully in and it renders them with a dash of energy that brings them to life in your images these colors are not flat or dead or muddy they're entirely the opposite very very nice color performance blur now well blur from this lens is 
something else. Very often in cheap lenses, despite the fact that you might get plenty of blur out of them, very often that blur just isn't so nice. Very often it's harsh and incoherent. There's no, nothing to unify it. It's all over the place and it's just some blur and it might be pleasing or it might not be pleasing depending on chance, depending on the relative distances between subject, camera and background. You might coax something nice out of them. This, I'm glad to say, is not one of those lenses. This lens gives beautiful blur absolutely gorgeous blur much of it looks all right i hesitate to use this word painterly there we are i've said it painterly it looks like it's been painted it has the energy of someone just you know making marks and swirls with a brush that's how it looks in um much of its presentation of Blur. Specular highlights make beautiful little bubbles in the background. The blur is energetic, it's smooth, it's coherent, it's pleasant, it's just lovely. And of course, this lens, if you shoot it wide open like I did at f2.8, this lens makes plenty of blur. You can use it as a portrait lens. It's really good for portraits. You can use it for nature shots, which I very much like doing because it just gives a very dreamy, very ethereal feel to a shot. Um, it's the kind of blur that adds to your shot rather than takes away from it. It's the kind of blur that really adds to the ethereal aesthetic effect of your work rather than detracting from it. It's just lovely. This is not just a lens designed to get a film photographer out of a low light scrape by giving them an extra stop and not really caring too much about what the image quality is like. It's not one of those lenses. It's a lens you can shoot Wide open all day at f2.8, makes some beautiful, beautiful blur. In fact, I shot this lens only at f2.8. So nice was that blur. It's a lens you can say to yourself, yeah, I really like the blur from that lens. I'm going to pick it up and stick it on my camera because it makes nice blur, not in spite of the awful blur it makes. This is lovely, lovely blur and I've rarely seen nicer. I don't see any major vignetting from this lens. Uh, I shot it wide open at f2.8 and I can't really see too much of a trace of any uh, vignetting. There may be some there, but there isn't enough there to interfere with your shot. Same for chromatic aberration, which is, you know, um, fringing that, that you get on, on fairly thin structures shot against a light background. Think uh, a tree in winter, for example, the, the, the bare branches against the sky. You'll often get a little separation, purple at one side, green at the other side. Don't see too much of that from this lens, if any. There may be some, but it's so nice, I'm not going to look too hard for it. Contrast is strong and that's one element that really helps this lens to make the nice images that it does, is that it does have this strong contrast. It's not a weak lens, it's not a washed out lens. It's, it's a lens that will give you plenty of oomph, plenty of, plenty of energy, plenty of presence. The images are very much there. They're not weak or withery or dithery. And the very strong contrast is in part responsible for that. Now, when I get any new old lens, I like to give it a jolly good clean because there's no telling what crud has got into it, into the rear portion over the years. There could be all sorts of dust and grime and goodness knows what in there. 
And it's a good idea to give them a good clean anyway, just to get rid of any extraneous stuff on the surface and anything on the front element. And you certainly don't want stuff dropping out of the lens, dust dropping out of the lens onto your sensor. And one of the ways I do it is using a good quality air blower. And I've recently been using this one. This is the perhaps slightly amusingly named Funkit series portable palm turbo air duster and uh, this is actually a really cool little piece of kit it's modular construction and it goes together very easily and i'll pop it together and show you how it goes together this is the actual blower unit itself there's the fan and that slides onto the power pack like that at least i think it's like that oh yeah like that and then we have this nice little unit ready for action you turn it on by pressing this button underneath here till the lights light up and then we're ready for some blowing action there is a brush attachment that fits on the front, if I can remember how to do it. And that goes over there. Now obviously your photo gear is going to be very delicate and you don't want too much stuff coming through that jet and hitting your sensor or hitting your glass. So there is a filter included. And let's see what we do with that. Okay, so that goes over the uh, inlet like this. And that goes over it nice and tight. So we've now got a filtered blowing system for cleaning any delicate and sensitive parts like sensors, for example, because obviously you don't want to, um, you know, force any grit or any dust onto your sensor. So probably the best idea is knock it down a notch or two. I would only clean a sensor with a machine like this on very low power and even then I'd probably only give it a fairly brief blast and I'd certainly make sure to have that filter on there but for general cleaning general uh, you know smartening up duties making sure old lenses are whoops making sure old lenses are properly clean uh, making sure all your electronic equipment is clean, then there really isn't anything better than a system like this. This camera does tend to sit around in the open quite a lot. It's used quite a lot and it does pick up quite a bit of dust. And there are a few better ways to give it a really good deep clean than a system like this. So there we are, a nice little piece of kit. The Funknit series, gosh, V-E-B-O-1-2-E hyphen s1 well you won't forget that in a hurry will you so all of the above are the many reasons that i am really happy with this lens i'm going to keep hold of this one i'm not going to sell it on it's too nice to sell on i'm going to keep it and i'm going to use it what it does show is that there are fantastic vintage lenses still available at very low prices and this is the channel to tune into if you want to find them. Okay, so that is probably about it from me for today. Many, many thanks go to subscribers. Thank you for all your support. I really appreciate it. Many, many thanks go to patrons 
for all your support and for supporting me through thick and thin. Thank you, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, heartfelt thanks to you. So please do all those YouTube type things which are ring the bell, subscribe and like. I ought to know those by now. So that is it from me for this week. Thank you very, very much for tuning in. And if you're not doing anything too important next week around this time, please do tune in again for another episode of Xenography. Cheerio all.